This is FE Peer Review. The date is January the 16th, 2022. A challenge to Corey Kell to produce a single sun altitude measurement that conflicts with the heliocentric model. The following is from a live stream by I Can Science That in which Corey Kell discussed his 45 degree sector test. For those of you not familiar with him or his test, please see my earlier video. The link is in the description. And now we have some people, I think, that are going to do this test in Australia in that summer because I'm interested in, in the southern hemisphere. We have readings up in the north. I have them from Afghan Southwest Asia, and I have them from the U.S. Now, both those sectors have failed for the globe model. So now we have two sectors with major geometric failure. Now, I'm interested in getting readings from other people who learn how to do it and what their information is from the south in the southern hemisphere. So we're we'll right. get more information as time goes on. I left a comment on I Can Science That's video to bring this to Corey Kell's attention. I'm putting together a short challenge video to Kell and his team to pressure them to publish hard data that can be independently reviewed. I believe he cannot produce a single accurate solar altitude measurement that cannot be reconciled with the geometry of the heliocentric model. My challenge to Kell is to produce such a measurement. Kell talks of failure and means that the angles he observed cannot be reconciled with the heliocentric model. That is the claim I am challenging on. He also says he has people in the, quote, southern hemisphere who are going to do measurements. Yes, in the southern hemisphere. Those are his words. This is my challenge to Corey Kell and his colleagues, including those in the southern hemisphere. I challenge you, Corey Kell, to produce a single accurate sun altitude measurement that cannot be reconciled with the heliocentric model. I request that you make your observation data publicly available in a convenient place, such as your own website. There are some necessary conditions I must raise. Knowing none of the people involved, I cannot evaluate their technical abilities at taking accurate measurements. Kell needs to establish a minimum standard of accuracy and a method of taking accurate measurements which is within the abilities of his team. He also needs to evaluate their measurements and certify that he considers them accurate. In short, he needs to take full responsibility for their work. Bear in mind that an inaccuracy even as small as 2 to 3 degrees will make measurements useless for the purpose of evaluating your claim. Next, you need a clear, explicit measurement of the solar altitude angle in each observation. The typical angle described as a, quote, solar altitude angle is as seen in this image. Note there where it says star, that would be our sun. The observer would be at the center of the image where it says observer. And the solar altitude angle we are talking about is this black arrow that goes from the horizon to the sun. This is the shortest angle, the smallest angle from the sun to an unobstructed horizon. Measurements following a path such as the green line or the red line are not correct solar altitude measurements. If the horizon is obstructed, alternatively, you can take a measurement from the zenith at the observer's location down to the sun and subtract that amount from 90 degrees to obtain the solar altitude angle. Other required data. One, observer location, precise and unambiguous. This can be a street address and city or latitude and longitude data to the nearest arc minute. Two, the local time of the observation to the nearest minute. Note whether daylight savings time is in effect. Three, the date. Solar azimuth data is not necessary but is useful nonetheless. Specify whether it is being measured relative to geographic or magnetic north. For consistency with the parameters outlined in the sector test, measurements should be taken at three hours before and after noon. It's not strictly necessary for our evaluation purposes that they be done three hours before and after noon. However, the actual times of the observations is required. Kell's essential premise is that he believes he can produce measurements of solar altitude that cannot be reconciled with the heliocentric model. 
I am willing and prepared to evaluate up to 100 accurate measurements by his team and check whether they contradict the heliocentric model. Corey Kell, I challenge you to produce even one accurate measurement out of 100 that cannot be reconciled with the heliocentric model. If you do not respond to this video as you did not to the previous video I addressed to you, I will assume you are incapable of producing such an observation and that you know it. Prove me wrong.